So Larry, I, the reason I wanted to talk to you today is because I've become a big fan of the Saints joints packaging. And yeah, absolutely, the joints are fantastic as well, but being a marketing nerd, right, um, I noticed right away that, that there are some interesting things about your packaging that creates more like customer um, uh, loyalty in them. So for, for example, you've got um, uh, certain packs that I think that are your, your regular line, but then you also have got these, these co-brand packs and, and special release packs that, that everybody starts to look for um, because they're you know they're special edition. If they don't buy them now, they're not going to be able to get them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and them so all. there are all these people on Instagram who are who are showing off all of their different Saints packages, um, like proud of what they've collected. Yeah. And so um, um, I want I just wanted to sit down with you and find out a little bit about how you think through that process because your approach is different than most everybody's. Where they they finally settle on one package and they they just do that again and and again. Yeah. But you're constantly redesigning your package so so tell me a little bit about that I have a really uh, short attention span in everything um, it started out with three packs it started with a silver pack which is sativa a gold pack indica and a green pack which was CBD mm -hmm. and then um, it, we it just kind of naturally moved along as we you know got bored right. with these three and then um, a collaboration pack happened uh, with gold leaf mm -hmm. Um, and that turned out great, and that blossomed into our first collaboration pack. But in the meantime, we did um, some limited edition boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, we did um, uh, pride boxes for, um, right. yeah, we made like 600 the first year, and um, donated proceeds to uh, Equal Rights Washington. Nice. Did it another year. I bet it. you that people buy those just, um, you know, as a historical document too, yeah. you know, people collect pride things and people are proud of pride. And yeah. so, so people who might not even have been familiar with saints, they were picking those up because you're, you're becoming an ally with this entire group of people. Yeah. It's yeah. who you identify with and exactly. Yeah. I, I do it. You do it. Everybody does it. What do you look for when you are looking for somebody or an idea that you want to co-brand with? Most of the ideas have come from people that I've worked with in the past or people that I admire or farms I admire or even just nice people. Right on. And, and that, that's cool too because that means that um, your likelihood of doing a co-brand with somebody who either A, is going to harass you, goes down, yeah. or B, you know, when, when you co-brand with somebody, um, you put, your brand is a little vulnerable, right? Because if they do something that's jerky, then that reflects on you for having a pack out with them. Yeah. And so if you're choosing people that are friends first, yeah. it's probably a lot less likely to happen. Totally. And as we, as we get, as we sell more and more boxes, that comes up more and more and more. Well, because yeah, each time you do a new co-brand, you increase your risk a little bit yeah. that something's going to go south. Totally. Totally. So um, I know you've got a, a background in um, uh, your record label. Yep. So, what are the similarities that you're finding between how you're managing the the packaging and the branding for Saints that are similar to things that you did when you were uh, packaging and marketing records? They are so similar that it's. I think that's why it came so easy mm -hmm. because you you know colored vinyl, different variations, limited editions, mm -hmm. you know, making them all different, mm -hmm. you know, and just having fun with it. So which comes first, the package or the, the cultivar choice? Um, right, it started with the packaging, but now the cultivar choice is the number one, mm -hmm. especially in the Washington market with, there's so much, everybody, it's so, the, the competition is really high at this point in time. Yeah, and so many of the companies like feel the same. Yeah. That was one thing I noticed when we were just touring your, um, your grow rooms is that I was smelling smells that I don't get when I tour many other grow rooms. There's a lot of there's a lot of um, unique terpene hits yeah. that I'm like, oh, I haven't smelled that you know in a room before, and um, and so it, it it lines up really well with your unique packaging too, right? Because I I see that I mean your your, your packages are also psychedelic, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so. Um, uh, you're pointing out that this is an uncommon product in the packaging, and then when they open it, 
they know, hey, yep. I, this is uncommon. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, um, we try to make sure that none of our plants taste or smell the same. Um, we have around, right now, about 20 uh, varieties, mm -hmm. and we're constantly adding to them yeah. as, we, as we go along. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, uh, how many uh, uh, different packages have you made in total now? Um, I would say right around 25. Mm -hmm. And yeah. are you still running those original three still? Um, we, I constantly change them. Right. <laughs> uh, so if you look at them, you'll see the small inconsistencies or differences for a true Saints nerd. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> Just like the record, first pressing, second pressing, you know. Right on. Um, uh, you know, one of the things that I noticed when we were walking through manufacturing is is how everything is still very much done by hand, you know? Yeah. Um, I spent a lot of time in California now and everybody is talking about scaling, right? Yeah. How, how everything's getting scaled up and you gotta be able to produ produce pounds for $400. Mm -hmm. And when we're all sitting there in the rooms listening to these people talk about this, we're all going, that's gonna taste bad, yeah. you know? It's like, this that's a plan for lots of mids, you yeah, know? for sure. So, so um, how does the, 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 the doing the packaging by hand and doing a hand trim on beautiful flowers, how does that also express itself in the garden? If, if you, we, we try to do everything like to 100% that we can, we, you know, that we can do with all the tools we have, you know, we're in Seattle, we're not in, we're not in the farm, you know, um, but if, if, um, if you take the care at every single step, the customer will will know, you know. We we're not perfect. You know, nobody's perfect. But totally. scaling, we'll see. Um, people who follow Shaping Fire know that I'm a real nerd for um, for no-till and KNF and yeah. probiotic inputs and stuff. And um, when I came to talk to you today, you know, I was coming to talk about the packaging, right? Because yeah. that's what that's what initially drew me to you, but. But then I find out you're no-till as well. So, yeah. so for for folks who folks who came for the packaging and now are are going to stay for the no-till, <laughs> yeah. um, tell us a little bit about um, uh, how how you you are expressing no-till and compost teas and stuff in your in your grow. Well, um, it's been a long journey. Obviously, I, I try to eat organic, smoke organic, everything. Um, and when I started delving into it, it. Uh, the plant health went down and then the plant health came up mm. really fast and now I've never seen as many the, the whole building is filled with dark green plants it's amazing you know and we're getting better and better and better just like the soil is um, so the the little dip you had because a lot of people you know they're concerned and I hear this from growers all the time if they if they're historically using salt bottled newts yep. They're afraid to make the move over to no-till or KNF or probiotic yep. because um, there's a lot on the line. They can't have a cycle that goes bad, right? Because yep. that could be six figures. Yep. So, so the little dip that you had, had, um, do you think that dip was because the plants themselves were going through a a botanical transition, or do you think that was more your learning curve in getting them flipped? Both, both. Yeah. Yep. It was soil. It was the soil health. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, and it's, yeah, it's obvious what now, nowadays. And luckily we didn't have a whole lot on the line when we took that dip. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm glad I did that. Less to, <laughs> less to lose, which allows you to experiment more. Yep, totally. Right on, cool. Yeah. Well, um, I really hope that you keep up with this gorgeous packaging and these great ideas. And, um, and uh, uh, I'm stoked to see uh, yet another, you know, premier farming operation going no-till. Yep. So best of luck and thanks for your time. Thank you. Right on, man. Yeah.